Right here is half of a hoof. Underneath that, there's meat and muscle. I'm literally gonna eat the bottom of a cow's foot. All right, let's try it out. Our epic Southern Africa food tour continues in the country of Zimbabwe. There's an ice cream guy. <laughs> Uh-oh, he's turning around. No, 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 I mean, uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, dang it. I got testicles in my hands. Last time, I took on this country's most succulent street food. Oh, we're eating with our hands, aren't we? There's forks in here. Right? These are the forks. <laughs> Today, I'm back in the capital city of Harare, heading into Africa's busiest market. It's so lively. There's so much action. I love it. I'm on a mission to explore the most unique flavors and recipes this place has to offer. And trust me when I say, there's a lot. From crawly creatures I've never seen anywhere else in the world. I've heard of them, I've never seen them. And here they are, millions of them in my hands. To cow parts I didn't know people could eat. You will eat this whole thing. And it all starts here. Aretha. Good morning, how are you today? Meet Aretha. After recently losing her job, she went all in on creating her own restaurant. A restaurant I'll get to see later today. This is where she gathers ingredients. This place is wild. It's full of energy, tons of people, and it's just sprawling. It goes on forever. People are selling everything you can imagine. Food, other stuff. I'm mainly focused on the food. Mbare Musica Market. It's a place where people are meant to buy food and take it away. But wherever you find large groups gathering, you'll find food, including this illegal street food kitchen. It's not supposed to be here. No, it's not. Because of healthy hazards, you have to get a license. Because of hygiene. Because of hygiene. With no permit and no clear way to get one, the owner here risks it all in an attempt to feed local workers and make a humble living. On today's menu, grilled chicken and sadza, a straightforward favorite. But if you ask nicely, they might show you this, cow lung and cow esophagus. I did not know you could eat that. Here yeah, we love it. It's nice for the vitamins and all. The cow's cow parts have been boiled down with onion, tomatoes, and a bit of salt. I've learned that this is the classic trifecta used for cooking pretty much any protein in Zimbabwe. Paired with rice and pumpkin leaves that are deceivingly delicious. Show me how to eat it. Okay. A little bit of rice. Then you dig in. Then you. All right. Mm. That's ridiculous. That's super delicious. Mm. Almost sweet and buttery. It's hard to compare it to another plant. Do they cook that with butter? They just use water. Wow. Mm. Wow, that's stupid good. No one's gonna believe me, but it almost has a sweetness of like crab legs. Yes. That is outstanding. I'm delaying the inevitable. We need to try these lungs and a big chunk of it. Let's go for it. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Very tasty, eh? Super tasty. And soft too. The flavors are not that strong. It tastes like salt, tomato, onion. Everything here we cook is natural. We don't do spices. All right, that was good. No, actually that was great. But now this is something that's blowing my mind. The esophagus, you will eat this whole thing. Yes, I can. Try the top first. Oh, like the ring? Yeah, the top ring. <laughs> Well, I'm not sure I'd say if it's tender. Same delicious flavors, but wow, what would you compare that to? That's like, if you're eating chicken wings and you get that really bristly tendon part that's connected to the bone, but it's all made of that. I think it was very nice. You need some powerful teeth to get through that. <laughs> Mbari Musica is located in the middle of Harare City, a fading gradient of vendors and residential buildings on the market edges yeah. make it impossible to measure. If you walk from one side to the other, how long does that take? An hour. In an hour. That's real big. That's bigger than it's quite big. a Walmart. I was told somewhere here they have insects. Yes, they do. Here they have some insects I've never even heard of, never even seen before. I didn't know people were collecting them or eating them, so I'm hoping to track those down. And if I find something, could you cook it up? Yeah, I will try and cook it. You'll for try. You. That's all I ask. It's the busiest market in Zimbabwe, and quite possibly in all of Africa. As you walk through the market, I mean, there's no way to just show this place through individual stationary shots. You have to feel it in 3D. Everywhere you look, there's a different food, someone carrying something on their head, pulling a cart. It's so lively, there's so much action. I love it. Mangoes. Nice. Over 17,000 people come here to do business every day. Boom. This is where everything begins. Everything that gets here, it either comes in big trucks or people from local villages are bringing it too. So there's people at all levels, all scales, just kind of rocking up, throwing down their fruit and doing their best to sell it before they head home. It's a distribution center for fresh fruit and vegetables that'll make their way to the rest of the city and surrounding areas. Behind me, there's a literal mountain of corn. 
And there's also 10 people looking at me wondering what the hell I'm saying. Everyone here speaks English, by the way. They're just like, it's corn. What's the big deal? Somebody has dropped all this off. They're going through it. And people who want to buy the corn, they go through, they inspect it, they check it, they buy it, they take it home or to their restaurant. How you doing? See, people are super friendly. They actually are, just not that guy. Just a five minute walk from where I had breakfast, another rogue food stall. Here they're serving up different chicken bits, including these salty deep fried intestines. An excellent snack or drinking food. I bring them. Salty, super crunchy. It's almost like a chicken jerky. Not bad, a little bit of an appetizer. A little bit of an hors d'oeuvre, if you will. It's interesting. I think because of hygiene, I think because of a lack of infrastructure, it's not really supposed to be a food place, but it's kind of unavoidable. Where people gather, there will be food. Here, they're serving intestines. Huh? Before leaving the market. Crunchy. I must see their selection of bugs. Yes, they have opane worms, but I tried those before in Namibia. How does it taste? It tastes like a gluten-free food. I'm looking for something I can only find here. We are deep in the market right now. I've come to your stall. This is your area. Yes. Where does it start and where does it That's end? That's from here to here. Uh-oh, so I'm in someone else's property right now. I, it's my property. Oh, this is your too? Yes. Caroline's stall specializes in pretty much anything she's interested in selling. Today, that includes big-headed ants. I've had a lot of ants before. I've never seen ants like this. A variation of the fire ant and an invasive species. They have kind of an average sized body and a huge head. They're a soil nester and can be found during the dry season. There's two kinds here. This is... This is termites. Termites? Yes. That's wild. Termites belong to the cockroach family. They also come from the ground. Anytime you see these giant, wet, brown mounds like this, well, that is a termite mansion. I've heard of them, I've never seen them. Well, because I live in the north in Minnesota. We have winter, so we don't really have termites. And here they are, millions of them in my hands. If prepared incorrectly, you put salts. termites can be poisonous. This is something I wish I'd known before tossing them in my mouth. It's pretty good. That is different than any other insect I've had. It's a very distinct flavor. I'm glad I tried this. It's nutty. It has kind of a musky flavor. Even a little, like a, wo a woody flavor. Caroline, I would love to buy some of these ants. I'm gonna take it to a restaurant. I'm gonna see if they can cook it up. Now, with ants in hand, I'm heading to Aretha's restaurant to see what she can do with this unique ingredient. This is fantastic. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. How long have you been doing this? I've been doing this for the past two years. Whenever she's not cooking at her home restaurant, she's catering events or parties. Today, we've invited the whole neighborhood for whatever comes next. But first, the ants. She prepares them two different ways. The snack version, fried in hot oil with a dash of salt. And the meal version, where the ants are boiled, then paired with peanut butter, and cooked down into a sticky paste. What is your specialty? My specialty is oxtail. Really? Yes. That's what we have right here. This tail has been stewing for three hours with, you guessed it, tomato, onion, and a bit of salt. Like most foods in Zimbabwe, this goes well with sadza, a mixture of corn flour and water. Before we get started, I need to ask, what the hell is this? That's our African cucumber. My least favorite food is a cucumber, and this looks like the grenade version of a cucumber. It looks like very aggressive, hostile, angry at its parents. People here call it, it's like a COVID disease oh. spike. <laughs> <laughs> when you cut this open, does it look like a normal cucumber? Yes, it does. All right, I'm gonna have to cut this open later. Mainly to kill it, because I don't like cucumbers. I'm gonna try the plain ants here. Mix it with salsa. Oh. Can you the crunchiness? It's super crunchy. These uh, big heads. Wow, that's quite a flavor. Pretty different than any other ant I've had. It's hard to pinpoint it. I'm trying to figure out if I like it or not. Super crunchy, salty, and then it just has its own little funk to it. Here, it's been mixed with peanut butter. Oh, it's a nice big bite. Let's go. Oh. Yeah, mm. smart. The peanut butter, it takes the edge off the ants. It makes it a little bit more smooth. Anything with peanut butter is awesome. I could mix lupus with peanut butter and it would taste good. This is your specialty, the oxtail. Oxtail is one of my most favorite things that I can't get anywhere. A lot of countries don't have it. It's also a food that just takes a lot of love and time. It's these beautiful cross sections of tail, the bones in the middle, of course, all the meat, protein, tissue, fat is all around it. I like it like this. Oh, you just bite it right off the bone? Yeah, I'm getting my hands dirty for no reason. Mmm. oh. That's undeniable. As you go up and down the tail, you have different amounts of fat and protein, so every bite's a little different. And the boiling, like the fat has really rendered down. So I just peel the protein off the bone. You can see it's like a continuation of the vertebrae here, going down into the tail, and that muscle just gets so tender and delicious. You stole my heart. Thank you. 
Today I'm making mazondo. Mazondo is the cow feet. Then we have the cow head. So what do you do with the cow head? We cut it up, then we boil it. We use an X to cut it. An X? An X. <laughs> I've got to see that. A big feast is coming up. We've got some ingredients from the market and then some surprise ingredients I have no idea about. I have some idea about. I saw it a little bit. Today, we're cooking up this whole cow head. I have no idea how it's gonna be done. Oh, oh my God. I don't even know if we can show that on, on YouTube. Is that a boy or a girl? Is it a boy? How do you know? Do you have a name tag? <laughs> oh, because of the horns? Yes. Beef is common and loved in Zimbabwe. And here, they use every part, head to tail, Back to crack. Step one, remove the tongue, which is just hanging off. So we're gonna save that for later. The tongue comes right off. So the goal here is to kind of char the skin. So this is a very delicate process. You don't wanna burn the skin or overdo the skin or even tear it away. You wanna heat it up just enough so all the hair comes off, the skin is still intact, so that can still be eaten later. Gentlemen, good luck. I can hardly see. Good luck. Here's the deal. This head's about to get chopped into little pieces so we can get put in a pot and boil for a long time. Do we have a chef knife? No. We have an ax. Hold on, hey, hold on, why are you backing up? You don't think I have control of an ax, huh? huh? Today's special cuts include the entire head, the tongue, and the cow feet. Now, with the head hacked into several unspecified chunks, it's time to cook. Boil it in water with a pinch of salt for four hours until the fat renders down and it becomes juicy. Next, the tongue is charred to remove its outer skin. Then filleted open and spread out, giving it more surface area to soak up more salt and to cook faster. Grill until it's cooked all the way through. The head meat and the tongue are paired with brown sadza made from sorghum. This is our final meal of the day. Everything today has built up to this moment. We started at Africa's busiest market where a lot of the produce for this restaurant is sourced. Plus, we have a cow head. I'm not sure where the cow head is from and I didn't want to ask. And I felt like when I saw the head, it was too late to ask the cow. Right now, people have dished up some food. Everybody's eating. This is kind of a familiar sight at this place. It's like a home restaurant. So there's a lot to try, let's get into it. Ooh, this is a tongue right here. Tongue is tough, because tongue can be, well, really tough if you don't prepare it properly. So this took about 20 minutes to grill that whole thing all the way through. Success. Oh, that's delicious. Super clean taste, really dense. I mean, tongue meat is very underrated. I would say tongue meat has a density kind of like heart meat. That's good. Goodness. You see they've cut it and scored it and it could cook all the faster. Here, this is a brown sadza. It looks like chocolate malto meal. Does it taste like that? No, it has next to no flavor, a little bit different texture than the normal sadza made from corn. But of course, that's meant to be paired with the other items on the dish because all this meat is very heavy for most people, but not for me. Here, head. This looks fantastic, actually. This is reminding me right now of the tail we already had. All the beautiful fats and tissues that have rendered down. They're just sticky and slowly coming apart. Okay, there's pros and cons. One, delicious. The fat is just melt in your mouth. The meat pulls apart. It's super tender. It's made with thyme and love and a little hostility. Ugh. The cons, um, there are little bone fragments in there. Ugh. You have to chew with caution because you might catch a little bit of a bone splinter. Delicious, this is really outstanding, I can't believe it. One of the most satisfying things I've eaten in a long time. Oh, look at this, what is this? It's pineapple and cucumber and mango. I've been brought a salad to go with all these heavy foods, but here, they have a type of cucumber I've never seen before. When you cut it open, it looks completely different from any cucumber I've seen before. I don't like normal cucumbers, but I like sea cucumbers. Super crunchy, it's a little slimy. It's a little bit like the green part of a watermelon, but I guess that's what cucumber tastes like. Here we have our last food. First, the cow feet hit the flames to get charred, scraped down, then cut into smaller pieces. All this will soon be soup. All it takes is salt, water, heat, and a lot of time. So this would be up on the ankle or a little bit higher up on the leg. It's just pure tendon. I'm gonna just pull this off. Take a look at that. Mmm. Tendon super delicious when it gets cooked down like this. Soft yet a little bit chewy, but it's so rich you can only have a little bit of that. All right, that is the foot. Right here is half of a hoof, and then the other half would be here, except they actually cut it down the center when they're preparing it. And what's really bizarre about the hoof is there's an enamel on the outside. The enamel is basically like a big fingernail. It's made out of keratin. Underneath that, there's meat and muscle. I'm literally gonna eat the bottom of a cow's foot. Let's try it out. Oh, that's awesome. It's not too dissimilar from the tendon. Almost like snappy, crunchy when you bite into it. Okay, this is a little higher on the hoof. Wow, that's just pure skin, bones, and then some cartilage in between. Mmm, that's fantastic. 
This is our third day in Zimbabwe. I'm pretty blown away, to be honest. We went to the market. Markets can be hectic, chaotic, sometimes aggressive, because people are there, time is money, they got work to do, and they don't have time for BS. But here, in Harare, in Zimbabwe, people have been very welcoming, open, and just curious about what we're doing, and just wanting to interact and be playful. So not only have I enjoyed the food today, but being able to interact with people in this community has been an absolute pleasure. Best Ever Food Review Show is a small team of independent creators, and everything we do here works because of you guys. Click the link in our description to join our Patreon and receive exclusive benefits. A peace. Hold on. I had to be beautiful. Am I beautiful? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not your type, but you know, to some. Ready? Can I put my foot on it? <laughs> All right, help me. <laughs> oh, there we go. Wow. Is it going to be okay? Watch out, ladies. We eat with our hands, right? Yes, we eat with our okay, hands. Okay, great. I washed my hands two hours ago, so I should be fine. Do you add a bit of salt? Oh, do I eat it from your hand or do I do that? Oh, I do that. Boom, that is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. That is day three in Zimbabwe. I want to say a huge thank you to Aretha for hanging out with me today and for showing me her amazing cooking at our home restaurant. I had a great time. I saw so many unique foods. I hope you guys enjoyed it too. As always, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Oh, peace. All right.